Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome a guest that has years of experience as an entrepreneur in various industries, which got me thinking about pivoting. What is pivoting? Why is it important? And why should an entrepreneur care? Now, for those that may have played basketball growing up, then you are pretty familiar with the pivot on the court. And in business, the concept is pretty much the same. According to Forbes, a pivot means fundamentally changing the direction of a business when you realize the current production or services aren't meeting the needs of the market. The main goal of a pivot is to help the company improve revenue or survive in a market. This is not a bad thing. Pivots are okay. Ever heard of a podcasting network OD or something like that? No, me neither. Uh, It was a podcasting network created by founders of another company. However, due to competition concerns from iTunes, these founders pivoted and gave themselves two weeks to invent a new idea. And just like that, Twitter was born. William Rigby Jr. was a former soap salesman who gave away free baking powder for every purchase. After seeing the baking powder do well, he stopped selling soap and pivoted to selling baking powder and giving gum away as an incentive to buy baking powder. Guess what William Wrigley Jr. pivoted into next? If you need some help guessing, just go visit the north side of Chicago. But don't you dare wear a White Sox hat. Starbucks pivoted from selling beans to owning cafes. Nokia used to be a paper mill way back in the day. Now, I'm probably going to date myself here, but who remembers the DVD Netflix? Man, I hated those people that would hold on to the new releases for like three weeks, knowing damn well they only watched it once, and now it's just sitting there. And it didn't even need to be rewound. Now, there are some companies that should have, could have pivoted, but didn't as well, such as Blockbuster. As the story goes, Blockbuster had the opportunity to purchase Netflix, but declined. And we all know how that story ended. Well, except in Bend, Oregon, where I believe the last Blockbuster still lives. Nonetheless, pivoting is important for an entrepreneur to understand and utilize if needed because it can help the company keep moving forward in a new world. Look at what's happening with NFTs. Nike purchased an NFT company to create their own NFTs. Strategically, an entrepreneur, you must always be looking forward. Like Wayne Gretzky once said, I skate to where the puck is going, not to where the puck has been. And that is what made him great. As the most recent world events have shown us, our futures can change in a blink of an eye. Most small business owners already know that. According to the 2019 SBA report, the failure rate of startup businesses is around 90%. Research concludes 21.5% of startups fell in the first year, 30% in the second year, 50% in the fifth year, and 70% in their 10th year. That gives this business I'm working on right now a very slim chance of success. Feels like almost guaranteed failure. But what has this show taught us? That's right. We don't fail. We learn. And that is why it is important to understand how to pivot and when it is necessary to pivot. Keep abreast to your market. Understand the trends. I just opened a TikTok. I know. I know. Still ain't dancing. But I felt I was missing out on the trends. Understanding what is new, hope, dope, fresh, out of sight, whatever you want to say. And guess what? I'm realizing I don't have to dance on TikTok. Now, again, it is not guaranteed a pivot will help any small business succeed or any business for that matter. Staying in tune to the fundamentals of what we've been discussing throughout these episodes still applies. Observe and address consumer needs, network, understand the law, ask for help. In the end, my measuring stick for this venture is to truly highlight our communities with a goal of decreasing the failure rate of our small businesses. The more we all know about the great businesses on our communities, the better equipped we will be to continue to help our communities grow. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. My next 
guest is an artist, Amon, at Curating the Portland Art Walk in April. She is the owner of an experimental art space in Pioneer Place Mall. Please welcome the owner of Gallery Gogo, Azuri Alto. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with the owner of Gallery Gogo. How are we doing? Good. Good. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much uh, for joining the show. I'm really excited because you actually have a, a really new business, actually, uh, about six months old. Um, kind of an experiment. So I kind of really want to hear about that. But first, introduce the world to you. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Azure Atto. I am the owner and director of Gallery Gogo. It's a creative activation space in Pioneer Place, and I started it about six months ago. Um, I think like a lot of people, I did a big pivot during COVID, um, had a lot of time to think and sort of like a, a creative lab where I could try out a lot of different things. Um, I've always been really interested in playing with retail in, in fun ways. So I got to make this space, which is kind of the best parts of an art gallery where you get to see art, but it's also very inviting and bright. And there are, you know, ongoing events. And I turned the dressing rooms into tiny little galleries. I'm trying to make like little immersive experiences. So yeah, that's what's that's what's going on. Love and it. I yeah. Now now does this gallery do you also kind of engage like other entrepreneurs to kind of sell their items or, or is it mostly your art that's there? It's um I would say that there's somewhere between seventy five and a hundred artists wow. and entrepreneurs wow. involved. Yeah. So, you know, I've had a, a hip hop band, I've had a full on fashion show, I've had some literary events. Um, I would say the thing farthest, like what you think would be farthest from art that's in there right now is there's a hot sauce company that is just my favorite hot sauce. And they have a little museum of hot sauce in the, um, in one of the micro galleries showing, you know, their journey as an entrepreneur, how they, how they, you know, developed the sauce and made it in their apartment and then got distributors. And um, I have it there specifically because they're a company that supports artists through um, design projects and collaborations. So I'm, I'm really about collaboration throughout the entire space. Love it. Now, now who, I got to ask, who's, who's the hot sauce? Ah, uh, that's Nuke. Nuke. And N-E-W-K-S. And it's, yeah, it's delicious. For the folks at home, you heard it here, folks, the best hot sauce. <laughs> I'm going to have to get them on the show now because I'm a big hot sauce fan. So I'm going to have to get them oh, on the show yeah. and hear about them. I'm going to bring them on. Oh, um, so so let's let's kind of let's talk about the GoGo Gallery a little bit more. How how did you kind of get, create the concept? Uh, did you have like a creative background? Or are you kind of an artist by trade, or did you kind of something this you just kind of fall into? Um, so I went to I got a scholarship to Oberlin College. If you know Oberlin College, is that its motto is "You think you can change the world? So do we." You know, and it's uh, <laughs> it's it's a very you know it's um kind of quintessential private college and it's it's where all the people the cast of girls went to have you seen that show i i must admit i have not i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah yeah i studied art there and i also studied economics and i worked in museums afterwards and, and worked in, a little bit in the music industry i did a little bit of fashion stuff I've worked in a lot of different areas. I've just, I'm always really curious and I love taking on different jobs. And I've been an artist continuously for about a little over 20 years. Nice. So you kind of been doing this for some time now. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's nice to, it's nice to be able to say, okay, I've been doing this for 20 years, you know, and I don't know. It feels good. It feels like, you know, it, it does kind Get, of feel like that. Getting little, old. I know. <laughs> I, was gonna say. <laughs> I must admit, you know, I've been in healthcare now a little over 22 years and I, I actually had a, a presentation and, and presented to Stanford Health the other day. And I'm like, said wow. that. Yeah. And I, and I said, I was like, yeah, I've been here for 22 years. And I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, damn, I'm old. 
<laughs> I know it kind of shocks you. Like, like at the know. same time, you're like, ah, oh, I've got, so, you know, I've got a little under my belt, but then you're also like, wow, I've been around for a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now your mission, so the mission of, of Gallery Go Go is to connect people through art. How exactly yeah. do you do that? Yeah, I mean, I think um, just on a very surface level, just where I am is really important. Like I specifically wanted to be in this mall in downtown Portland. I've had other places, you know, invite me to suburban malls or, you know, other places. And I really just, I want to be downtown. It's very important to me um, because, you know, I think most of us can agree that art can, you know, inspire us and it can connect us across our differences allow us to see through somebody else's eyes, but you have to have access to the art for it to do anything, you know? So being right there in the middle of the mall, I get the most diverse visitors that I've ever experienced in my 20 years working in art, you know? So um, I think just in that, in that way, number one, I connect people because a lot of different people come in, you know, tourists from all over the world, from suburban Portland, from inner Portland, the second way that I connect people is I am always looking for those points of collaboration. Uh, you know, like, a, you know, all these people that I'm bringing in, I brought in, you know, Newt's Hot Sauce to, to show how they got started and how they collaborate with other artists. There's uh, Mimi's Fresh Teas, which is a social justice t-shirt company. They have like sort of like a little museum set up where they have all their inspirations for what they do. I've brought in a lot of different artists who have, work with each other. I also tend to curate towards shows that um, I like, I like, I like to put two things together and show, you know, the connections between their work. I love bringing in a lot of different makers and um, showing how, you know, how art can be all different things. You know, there are people that, you know, I have like a, I have six thousand dollar paintings and then i also have you know stickers that artists make there's all these different ways that people bring their creativity into into people's lives i love it you know in fact you you mentioned uh a a guest or an artist that you're working with uh mimi's fresh teas yeah i so for the folks at home that might be listening to this episode right now you may have recently heard mimi's fresh teas it is not out yet in fact as we're recording this, I have not released this episode yet, but the episode will be coming out in February. So folks at home, you're now realizing how far in advance we record some of these episodes. But she does some phenomenal work. And and it's I think to your point, one of the things I truly enjoy about this podcast is the the network of individuals and then all the creators, how they create with in fact during um the conversation I was having during that podcast episode with Mimi's Fresh Teas, we discussed another former guest, Steven who did some artwork here in Portland as well. And so I just love how the creative world really does kind of, you know, kind of come together as one. Now, in your perspective, yeah. why is this business so important? Why why is this collective of creators so important to you? Um, I mean, it's just uh, so much has closed down. There's, there's not as many places that artists can show their work. There's not um, as many in real life opportunities and we've been isolated for a long time. And I really feel like for creative innovation, for entrepreneurial innovation and for mental health, it's really important that we have a place to go and uh, feel inspired uh, for artists to go and to feel inspired and to show their work for visitors to go and, um, see what kind of things are happening. Like, um, I, it, I just know that people are delighted when they come in, you know, there's so much that is just different and, and fun. People are always talking about the vendory of vending machine I have, which is, uh, by, uh, Taylor Valdez, who's a, you know, the Venderia. I, you know what? I've been talking with Taylor and we're going to probably get her on the show at some point soon too. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic! See all these amazing people. It really that is. I, it work really, with I love this space. community. It's a great community. We we're so lucky to live in Oregon. I swear. Oh, we really are so lucky, and I want this to be, you know, I I just want this to be like a, like I said, like a lab and um, a meeting point, and so much can happen there and has happened there. Artists, I've seen artists who never made prints of their work start to make prints, you know, because. 
I'm always looking for ways to uh, make artists practice more sustainable for themselves and um, just help them help them increase their impact and, and the same with my own work but it's, it's really exciting and I never I honestly I don't think I ever realized how much I love working with other artists until I started this I'm an, I'm an extrovert. I like talking with people. I like yeah. meeting new people. I like networking. You know, that's kind of what my career is, is revolved around in healthcare. And so when that was missing during the pandemic, this podcast was, has been just a huge outlet for me and, and really kind of feeling good. <laughs> like personally, yeah. it's like a mental well being for me. I was going to say, is this your first business? It's not my first business. Um, I've always, I've always loved the idea of having my own business. When I was a little kid, I I would like just like write about all the businesses that I wanted to have and I would save up my money from babysitting and cleaning apartments and go buy office supplies and set up a little fake <laughs> office, you know. I don't know. I've, so, you know, I've always had some hustles going love on. Love it. Love it. Um, yeah, and I you know, I had a, for a while I had a product design business and I sold a bunch of things to new seasons over about a year and a half. And, and that was, you know, I, I didn't end up wanting to scale that. So that was something that just sort of naturally ended. But yeah, I've had, I've had various business, businesses, but this is my favorite by far. So let's, let's talk about this a little bit. Cause you said you got in the product industry, which is a little bit, you know, you're kind of going through a little bit more operational. How is, how is going through that, like creating a product and taking it to design and then actually going through the, um, you know, kind of the process of getting it on the shelves. How is that different now than your current business? Yeah, that you know, I all of the other businesses that I've ever had were just me, really. You know, um, it was me designing a product, going and, and cold calling and then pitching and, you know, then like, you know, hiring a little bit of like uh, short-term help to help me make these things and then distributing them and, Um, But it was really just kind of me away from the public eye. And so this is, this is very public. You know, I've never had something where I was consistently bringing other people in and it was really, you know, more about other people collectively than, than what I was doing. And I didn't know that I'd be so happy to be out in public talking to people all the time, but I love it. I really, I didn't think I was an extrovert. I thought I was an introvert. Um, (laughs) But then it's just been so fun and interesting connecting with people. Yeah. So, yeah. So I would say that this is this is definitely the first brick and mortar I've ever had, um, which is more challenging, you know, even just on like the very little basic level of like, okay, if the lights burn out on a track, you have to figure out, you know, you have to call an electrician or fix it yourself or, yeah. you know, you have to deal with like the day to day maintenance of this of this thing, you know, this living kind of, it almost feels like a giant creature sometimes, you yeah. know, that you have to keep warm and, and take care of it. I like it. And so for the folks at home that may not be aware of this, what, what this um, concept is, so brick and mortar is essentially defined as a, a physical space, right? So like if you mm-hmm. go to a yeah. store, right, brick and mortar, correct? Now, was your other um, other businesses focused more online or have they because you mentioned this is kind of your first brick and mortar. What was that product that you mentioned you kind of created for New Seasons? Are you able to speak about that? Um, oh, yeah. It was a wool wallet. I used reclaimed wool from the Pendleton Wool and Mills, and they gave me permission to use their ends. So it was sort of like a an ecological way to reuse what you know may have been thrown away and make it into something cool for New Seasons. And I made like, I don't know, many, many little wallets. And they sold at all of the new seasons in uh, Washington and Oregon. That is awesome. Oh, wow. That is awesome. And but, uh, for the folks at home, think about that too, because I think that's, there's so many different ways to create, you mm-hmm. know, and that's just one, yeah. one unique way of reclaiming, you know, reusing different items. That's such a, such a cool way. Now, in your experience, what, what has been hard about, you know, being a, a entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, surprisingly, one of the hardest things was the marketing part, like just getting the word out. And that wasn't what I expected to be hard. You know, I expected um, it to be 
financially difficult. I expected to work seven days a week, you know, which I do, but that's just, you know, you know, that's part of entrepreneurship and I, and I really actually love it. You know, I expected to be tired, but, but I thought somehow just having a place, if I could just make it as exciting and interesting as possible, then people would just know about it somehow, you know, if I posted online or whatever, but, but the marketing part is, is challenging. And, um, I'm very lucky to have worked with Cassidy from Modern Ally. Um, she was able to write me a really great marketing plan and help me kind of get on top of it and feel like, okay, all of this work that I'm doing, I can bring it to the people that really uh, would benefit from it. I love it. And, and for the, for the folks at home, just real quick, Modern Ally, mm-hmm. former former sponsor of this podcast. Another oh. great episode, so please check out that episode again. Another really good good company to work with. I've worked with them in the past as well. In fact, the casting team will probably be uh, redesigning my my uh, website here soon once I collect Mine the funds too. to get that. Dude, I, it, man, having them be able to work on those things is so nice, right? Uh, so curious, yeah. Because when, okay, so here's another thing that I would say as far as, so, you know, as an artist, like I'm a painter and, I have not painted a whole lot in the last six months. You have to know that when you start a new business, probably a lot of other things are going to have to scale back. So let's let's flip it. What has been easy? Oh, okay. What's been easy is just meeting incredible artists. Like, at, you know, when I walked into the space that was over 3,000 square feet, I was like, how am I ever going to fill this? And then it was like the snap of a finger. Like a month later, it was filled you know, with, with dream work. There's just, there's so many creative, incredible people that are doing uh, so many fantastic things here in Portland, but, you know, it's really now searching for more space. Now I'm like, uh, now the mall is, um, you know, I'm renting out spaces and up in windows around the mall just so I can do more installations. And I'm starting an art walk downtown um, on Saturdays so that other galleries and, creative businesses can participate. So you're in the mall, which is very, very unique. Cause you know, I think people, you know, the mall is like yeah. a dying concept or some people feel that yeah. way, but you've been able well, to kind of yeah. pivot it in a way to, cause I think in the past, I don't think people really thought as a mall of a place to go and find different creative art. They kind of feel like, Hey, let's go and find name brand Foot Locker, Nike. Exactly. Adidas. Why, why the mall? Right. I wanted it to be, you know, I wanted it to be very accessible to tourists because I want it to be um, a space where artists from Portland can have their work have an impact on an international community. And we are fortunate here in Portland that we don't have a sales tax. So people will travel here from Japan and Dubai and come for just a weekend to buy Gucci or Louis Vuitton without a sales tax. And they're like, oh, it basically pays for the trip, you know. But they'll, they'll come here and they'll see artists and they'll be able to take, you know, take that art back with them or take those ideas back with them. Also, downtown is very important to me. It's where I live. Um, and I feel like right now it really needs a lot of our attention as a city. I want, yeah, it's really important to have a thriving downtown. And if you go far back enough, you know, I mean, I love all the 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 fun silliness of the mall you know um <laughs> when i was a kid you know i had you know i don't know when i was a kid i honestly had like a pretty disrupted life and like the mall was some place where i went and everything was clean and it was bright and i felt optimistic and um and it just always felt like i could just walk around you know i didn't necessarily have to buy anything uh you know i didn't have as much access to museums and things like that but there was this uh, pop pop about the mall that was fascinating. Yeah, and so those two things about the mall. And then also, if you go back far enough historically, the mall really has been a center of communities, you know? I think you would more call it like a market or something. But, but the mall really, it, it's got good bones, you know? It can be transformed into something. Um, and it can, I think these, innovative small businesses like mine and like another example of a small business in that pioneer place is a, a boutique called Inkasi and it is 
Yeah, there's a, it, my friend is an independent designer that owns it. He's um, from Togo in Africa, and he um, his name is Jean Pierre, and he designs these incredible like clothes that you've never seen before, and he um, helps artists from where he grew up uh, bring over like jewelry and things like that that help support them. And he also will make one of fine stuff. So if you've ever had like a dream garment that you've wanted to make, like he'll make anything and he is just like spectacular he has joked that you know in america people think of a fashion designer as a super fancy person but where he's from like it's just a skill that you pick up if you need to make money and you know you don't have enough money for college um so he and i have made this like huge shirt this giant denim shirt that would be for like a a I don't know, like if you were like 16 feet tall. Um, <laughs> I love and, it. He's, and he's making me a t- like tube skirt to go over my pedestals for art. And um, and then we're making like a scarf, like that are kind of like jean jackets, but scarf so that you can easily put your wallet. In. We're just doing all these fun things. And I, I love that he's in the mall and I really collaborate with, all the other businesses surrounding me as much as possible, you know, because I don't want to just be an art gallery that's in a mall. I want to be part of an ecosystem. Um, the Starbucks across the street, like the, um, uh, some of the people who work there ask their manager to donate coffee to our opening. Love it. Yeah. Just all sorts of really, really great collab. I've collaborated with Muji down the street and we made bags together. Man, yeah. I love that's why I love the mall because it's right there. The sense of collaboration is so cool, especially amongst our creators. In fact, John Pierre, if you're listening, come on the show. I want to hear about some of these <laughs> these clothes that you're making, especially ones that you're bringing from overseas. That's very very interesting. Now, one of the things you actually mentioned, what like some of the difficulties you're having, uh, in particular, is 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 marketing and, and, and like kind of creating mm-hmm. your brand, uh, creating your brand. I'm sorry. How do you market yourself? How do you market your brand? I really mostly focused on these um, natural relationships and collaborations. Uh, one of the, you know, and having events. I think that that's been the best for me when, you know, when it's safe and when people are, are able to do it. I've had like kind of nonstop events. I had a, a really great collaboration with a record store. They came and had a record pop up for a few days and, um, I hosted Jean Pierre's fashion show in my space and I, you know, I post on Instagram a lot. Yeah. It's been a lot of word of mouth. You know, I had speaking to this, I had a very uh, funny, but kind of sweet experience. There was a woman who came in and she's probably in her twenties and she was like looking really closely at everything and taking pictures and just like so excited and buying a bunch of stuff. And we talked a little bit. And at the end I was like, well, you know, I have Instagram, an Instagram account you could follow to be, to know what's happening here. And she was like, well, you know, I shut down all my social media two years ago. And I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And I was like, well, how, you know, how would I reach somebody like you that that doesn't have any social media? And she was like, well, I would just write down your intention on a piece of paper and just put it under your pillow that you want to meet people like me. (laughs) I was like, that's so sweet. But, Bold um, strategy. <laughs> Bold and strategy. I, actually, I did it because I was like, hey, you know, this doesn't cost me anything to try this. Yeah. Um, but it is so funny because, like, it made me kind of think about, like, how do you reach people that aren't on social media? And plenty of people aren't, you know, and that's really the only and, you know, I guess it's like podcasts and, um, you know, more community things and really just sort of organically uh, connecting with people. I've had some very old fashioned tactics that I've employed. Like I, I have a, a sandwich board on the skate that I love that has artists on it. And I want to have like three more sandwich boards so that I can feature artists work around downtown. And then, you know, uh, getting other window space downtown has been good too. It always looks better to have an art activation in a window very than true. an empty window with nothing in it. I agree. And there's a lot of empty windows downtown. Sadly, yes. Yeah, right. There's there's quite a bit um, right now in downtown. And we're we're and 
with your help, it sounds like we're getting, we're turning a corner. We are turning the corner. Definitely. I love it. So now what advice would you give aspiring entrepreneurs interested in creating or designing or even just starting a business? What advice would you give an inspiring entrepreneur? You know, and I think there's all different businesses. And the one that I've started is definitely one of the more challenging ones. I would say if you want to start an art gallery, I would give yourself a runway if possible. Kind of gather your resources, you know, think really carefully about location. Definitely, definitely consult with a commercial lease lawyer before you sign anything. Because I figured, you know, ah, I'm smart enough. I read all the Apple, you know, contract stuff. And I, you know, but the thing with commercial leases is it's not even that you need to understand everything about them, but you need to give weight to certain things more than other things. Um, and they are very long and very complicated and they have a big impact on, you know, how sustainable your business can be. And I was really lucky on two fronts. First of all, the mall is incredibly supportive to me and the business. Um, but that's not always going to be the case. I would say that most commercial situations, you're really going to have to look out for yourself. And, um, I also worked with uh, Accelerate Women's Business Fund, um, and they were able to get me the ability to work with Rational Unicorn. Rational Unicorn is an incredible law firm that's really focused on helping creative entrepreneurs navigate the legal aspects of their business. They're very uh, LGBTQ plus friendly, and they're very active in the community, and they're just incredible have your lease looked over. As far as like somebody who just wants to scale in who wants to make some money from their art, there's so many different ways that you can go about that. I would just, you know, having a consistent practice, taking care of yourself, you know, because you're, I mean, as an artist, I feel like your life is, your art is an extension of your life. And so, and I've got to always remind myself of that too. You've got to keep taking care of yourself and feeding yourself new ideas and um, curating the, you know, the energy around you. I love things like, and this isn't for everybody. I work with a lot of different artists and all different artists have different goals for their work and how it needs to be, uh, existing, how it needs to exist in the world. I really like printing work. I think that that, um, allows you to have a, a good reach and, um, have a more sustainable practice. So, I have my paintings printed, but finding the right printer is really important too because you need somebody who, finding a really good fine art printer is just way more difficult than you would ever imagine. And it took me years and years, but yeah. Now I work with a place called Gango Editions here in Portland and they are my print partner. Um, and they're a women, woman-owned printer. They started in Portland as, The mom started as a gallery owner, so she's just very, you know, they're very, very focused on high quality, and it's uh, two generations of women. She passed it down to her daughter, who now owns it. Having them as a support and a print partner has also been one of the, one of the big reasons why the business is going as well as it is. I've been able to allow artists to, to try out printing for the first time. I've able to put up shows quickly because I could print artist work out and um, I actually like the print of my paintings better than the original painting I like it yeah. you, you know you've so throughout this kind of last process in particular we're talking about you know advice for the entrepreneurs you've mentioned it several times where you've actually extended your hand out and said listen I don't understand printing or I don't understand this legal yeah. contract for the listeners, especially the the you know newer entrepreneurs that maybe are just getting into the small business world, how important is it to lean on professionals that are experienced in areas that you may not be experienced in? Why is that so important? Oh, a hundred percent. It's you know you're uh, yeah. I mean i I'm from rural Minnesota. You know, I grew up in the sticks, and I you know I <laughs> I eventually. <laughs> I eventually moved to New York City, but I had this thick Minnesota accent, and I was working in galleries, and I was like, oh, yeah, for sure. You didn't stick out at all, huh? 
<laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm used to, I'm used to kind of being humble, and I am in awe of people's uh, abilities. I, I just, I know how much we all have to offer and the easiest way to uh, make yourself way more effective and to um, help people that you want to help, you know, to, to make other people that you're working with more effective is to reach those professionals, you know, and um, it's not always going to be the right fit, but the more you're reaching out and the quicker you can make those decisions, the better. Yeah. it's uh, And then once you have, once you have those professionals that you can reach out to and you have them, you know, you have, you have them in your orbit where if something else comes up, you don't have to go searching, you know, because things will come up. It's constantly. Coming up. I mean, that's the excitement and the challenge of being self-employed is that you're never going to be able to stop learning. The, you know, the earth is always kind of changing under your feet. So, Man, that is so true. And that, that's the beauty of it. Like every day, mm-hmm. folks, we get to wake up and just as humans, right? And even this is across the world in species, okay? Let's be a little bit more inclusive about everything. Every day, every species has an opportunity to wake up and learn something new. Take advantage yeah. of it. Take advantage of it, right? Yeah, it's fun. You know, and um, when I when I decided to start this business, like, you know, the the advice that I gave other people is like, give yourself a runway, all that. I mean, I didn't have any runway. I had like a few weeks to decide whether I wanted to do it because the space was there and, you know, and I felt like the need was high and, um, and I just jumped in and I, and I learned as I was going, I had to pull people in, you know, I had yeah. to, I had to ask. I like everything. it. Yeah. Now, now for the listeners at home, how do they find your business? Where are you at on the social? Do you have the web page? You have a local. You have a physical address. So let the folks yeah. know at home how they can get in contact with Gallery Gogo. Gallery Gogo. So if you are on Instagram, um, it is at Gallery Go 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 Three Goes. And I also have a website, which Cassidy is going to help me. Uh, Let's go, Cassidy. <laughs> rev up. Man, she's going to help me too. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love her work. Um, and yeah, she did the Venderia site too. But in any case, I've got I've got a holding. I've got a, a website now, and that's called uh, gallerygogo dot com. And then you can always find my gallery right there in downtown. I'm open every single day. Um, I'm at Fourth and Morrison downtown, uh, right across from the Nike store and above Gucci. And I am open. Monday through Thursday from 10 to 6 and Friday and Saturday from 10 until 7 and then on Sunday from 11 to 6. So there's so much time where you can pop in and say hi and I'm almost always there too. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Azuri Auto, thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show today. Folks at home, please visit her shop because you're not only supporting the gallery go 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 but you're also supporting other local artists that are there so please go visit the location for more information on the shades of entrepreneurship thank you for tuning in to the shades of entrepreneurship for more information please follow the shades of e on twitter instagram facebook or visit the shades of e.com